Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, welcome to Mike's Guitar Workshop. Um, I was going to do a review on this guitar, but there's already so many. And we know it's a great guitar. So what I wanted to talk about today is why I bought this. Because I have a CE24 Semi Hollow, which is my main guitar. But I was looking for a, um, a nice backup guitar. So I asked uh, Marshall Music just to send me this. And while they were at it, they sent me the green one, which is a 2408, which I'll be doing a review on uh, after this. I was going to do a review on the CE, but we've heard that also a hundred times, so it's semi-pointless to do that. So I bought this guitar knowing that I was going to mod it because, well, let's go through some of the mods that I made and uh, we'll see what happens. So the first thing I did was put a aluminum truss rod cover on. So that improved the sound dramatically. No, I'm just kidding. I just did that because I could. Uh, then I put an aluminum brushed output jack plate here for no real reason, just because I could. And I think it looks kind of funky. Um, then I 3D printed two white pickup covers because I liked the way that the CE, where the, the, the screws were sunk in flush to the, uh, to the pickup rings, whereas the stock ones, they stand out. So I, did, I designed this, 3D printed it, and I tightened the, um, the hole where the pickups come through. So it's uh, flush, just like the, um, the CE is. And also that they, I measured exactly where I wanted the pickups, and I adjusted the height of the individual rings so that they can just be flat. When you look from the side, I'll put a picture up. They're completely flat and it just looks kind of groovy, I thought. Um, so those are the cos cosmetics. Uh, then I also, of course it's covered now, but I took two springs out and I took the two outer springs and I pulled them in towards the two center holes uh, just to give it a bit more tension because I wanted to float the bridge. It was floated, but it was a bit stiff. I like it to be very smooth. Um, it's still flat to the body, but I've just, it just moves very easy. So I did that. And then the most important upgrade that I did is I'll, I've always done this on all my guitars anyway. Uh, the stock, CE24 comes with just one push pull over here. So this is still the stock one. And that splits both the humbuckers. However, I like to split them individually. So I just added a second push pull here. So essentially, we've created a 2408. Uh, because I've got the separate sounds now. I can split that. In the middle, I can split that. I can have them both up, I can have them both down. So uh, I like to have, I use mostly this in split mode, unless I'm doing a solo, uh, then I'll have this in humbucker. And this one as well, I'll use a lot in single coil and I also use it in humbucker. So, but sometimes when I'm playing a song, I like to have this ready to go uh, in rhythm, clean. And when I flick to that, it's already in humbucker mode, and I can just crank it. I don't have to be, I don't have to be flicking and pushing and, you know, like the original would be. I also had a look at the switch. It was a bit, um, a bit not so cool. So I didn't do much to it. I just uh, actually put some, um, some white grease on the little pins that are inside here. Yeah? And that made it very smooth. And it's fine, fine to use. Then I also put 11s on because the standard nines, they were just too thin and brittle. 
But sorry, getting back to the uh, the pots. Usually, okay, so let's, uh, I did measure them and they're about eight ohms, roughly, eight, 8.2, thereabouts. But when you split them, they go to exactly half because it literally earths the one coil. And that gives you that typical anemic, no tone, single coil sound that no one's running for. However, on my CE24, that's not the case. Uh, it's also got the 8515 pickups in, just like this, but these are of course the Korean versions, but that's besides the point. But I noticed, and the reason I bought that guitar actually, is because in single, in split coil mode, that thing sounded absolutely amazing. I bought a Silver Sky SE because I like the single coil sounds. Uh, especially when it's uh, slightly driven or clean and you can't get that on a straight humbucker guitar but um, I was missing those those tones so I bought the Silver Sky and I was using a Les Paul kind of guitar as my humbucking guitar and the Silver Sky as my single coil guitar however every time I went for that lead sound or the solo sound I was missing the humbucker you can do your solos in your single coils but for me, it just wasn't the right sound. But I liked this, this, the single coil sounds in um, a slightly, slightly dirty amp sound. So anyway, a friend of mine owned that CE. He brought it here, we set it up, and I plugged it in and I played it and I thought, damn, that thing just sounds ridiculous. It was just absolutely mental sounding. So two weeks later, I said to him, if you ever want to sell it, let me know, you know. So anyway, there it hangs, bought it, never looked back. But now I'm playing two to three times a week and uh, I'm starting to notice some fret wear on that. And I thought, uh, yeah, right, I better do something about that. So I was in search for a, a backup guitar or one that I could just pick up at random and it doesn't feel alien or different to me, but it must sound as good as that and it must feel as good as that. So Marshall Music uh, sent this to me and I had a play on it and the first thing I noticed was how resonant it is. Even just not plugged in. So I kind of like that because this version is made in the Cortec factory and the, the previous versions were either Indonesian, Indonesian or Korean. Um, and I couldn't quite get along with them because they just didn't resonate like, like this one does, you know? So I kind of sh sh shied away from the SEs. But anyway, so it, it came along, I plugged it in, mm -hmm. The first thing I noticed when I split the coils is how flat and empty it sounded. So I thought, uh, right, hmm. So I measured, I measured the capacitors uh, on the, I'll put a picture up. What happens is when you split the coil, it sends the one to earth uh, through the push-pull pots, usually directly to earth, which only makes the one coil live. However, on the USA versions, which that is, there's a different, um, there's two different resistors, one for the neck, one for the bridge. The one for the neck is 2.2 K ohms, and I'm gonna put a picture up of the uh, multimeter readings where you need to be and where you need to measure. And the one in the back was 1.8 K ohms, not ohms, but kilo ohms. So I went to the local TV repair shop and they've got these little trays and I found all these resistors in these little strips and I just took my multimeter with and tuk, 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 and I measured 2.2, 1.8, let's have them. They were a couple of bucks, it's not even an issue. And so from the earth 
when from the from the pin to earth, I remove that and I put this resistor in in between. So what that does is it leaves the coil that should be earthed. It leaves some of that coil in play. So not only does it not make any noise when you're in single coil mode, it doesn't hum, it doesn't have that 50 or 60 cycle hum, but also what it does, it fattens up the single coil sound, which is what I liked about that guitar. It has such a beefy uh, single coil guitar sound that, in fact, it was so good, I compared it to my Silver Sky, and the video is still up, and not one person has got it right, which is the Silver Sky and which is the, uh, the CE. The, everybody's wrong, um, just, which just shows you how good that guitar is. So I played that guitar for one month, two months, and then I, I took the Silver Sky with, but I never landed up playing it. It's a great guitar, uh, but I just kept playing that because it was just so good in single coil mode, I didn't need the, uh, the Silver Sky anymore. So I was looking for a backup guitar to that which this is, and here we are, and this is the uh, Cortec, the SE uh, uh, C24. So it's got the same trem system as that guitar, so it's just as smooth. Uh, the tuners are locking on that one, and they're not locking here, but that's another discussion I'm going to have with you in another video. Locking tuners or non-locking tuners, so we'll get to that another time. So what I did on these tuners, they felt very loose. So I just took a little Phillips screwdriver and I just tweaked these until there was just, just a nice bit of tension on them. Not too loose, not too tight. Um, just a nice feel. It's very smooth and it hasn't gone out of tune. Uh, since I put the new strings on, been playing it. Happy days. Um, so this is not a review on this guitar um, because we've, we've seen those already. I mean, the fretwork is just immaculate. The finish is immaculate. Uh, just quickly got a three-piece, besides the two ears, just, it's, it's a three-piece maple neck. And this heel is not glued on, it's part of the neck. On the CE, that piece is glued on, and it's got a scarf joint, that CE. This doesn't even have a scarf joint. It's just one long piece of wood, or three put together. And then the whole thing carved out and just the little ears put on. So that's quite a bonus. Uh, a beautiful rosewood fretboard, 24 frets, very well polished, well rounded, feels exactly like that. In fact, when I just sit and noodle on, the, on them both, I can't even tell which one I'm playing. And that one is just brilliant. It just feels smooth and it's beautiful. It's just lovely, just like this one is. Stunning. So I'm going to just uh, go through some tones. Of course, just hearing it now, you're not going to hear the before and after. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go into the workshop quickly, take those capacitors off, earth the pickups, and do the sound demo again. And then I'll, in the edit, I'll glue the two together, and then they won't, I won't talk. I'll just play the same thing, one after the other, and you'll hear what a difference um, it made adding those two resistors. So just, again, 2.2. It doesn't have to be exactly 2.2, it can be 2, 1.8, just round about there, but not 3 or half, half an ohm, a kilo ohm, it must be round about there. And then it, it leaves about 15 to 20% of the other coil in play in each case. Um, and it just completely changed this guitar. So here's a couple of tones. Uh, I'm running through my new Boss GX100, which is stunning. Um, and these are my gigging tones. Not changing anything. Uh, I'm not gonna do any post processing. This is how I play. And I plug all my guitars into the same patches and then they just sound the way they, I don't make separate patches. They just sound the way they do. Um, otherwise you land up making one guitar sound like the other guitar and they're com two completely different guitars. So I like to just, I just, if I'm playing a Les Paul, I just bomb it in and that's just the way it sounds. And so here we go. Um, 
humbucker mode. Uh, I'm just going to play a riff that I'll remember because I have to do the whole thing again um, in the other split coil mode. So it'll be humbucker, split coil before, split coil after. But I'll note that down in the in the edit. So here we go. Straight clean tone. But it obviously it comes, it, any guitar comes more alive when you just add a bit of grunge to it. So let's do that. Same thing again. Uh, we'll start on the neck. So it'll be neck, humbucker, split coil before, split, split coil after. And uh, you can play basically any kind of song with this. I mean, this thing really comes alive, especially with that mod. Uh, really spanky. Uh, for instance, I use the extra pot just to have this in a clean mode. So there we go guys, some very easy mods, uh, not so much the aluminium parts and, and the pickups around, but the, um, 
the little resistor in between the split coils. In my next video, where I'm going to review the 2408, which has got the TCI pickups in it, uh, this one doesn't, then I'll compare the two, um, and we can hear the difference between the TCI pickups and these pickups, because in humbucker mode, they'll still be basically the way they were. It's just in the split coil mode that it'll be different. I'll have a look at the back of that one to see if it's got those little resistors in it. Um, I doubt it, but we'll have a look and I'll put a picture up in the next video. So there we go, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, keep, uh, stay tuned for the review of the 2408. I might do a review on the CE24, but there's already so many out there. Don't quite see the point. Um, but yeah, this is this this uh, this SE twenty this SE twenty four is just a killer guitar. It's very for the money, the finish is spectacular. It feels absolutely great. I mean, it's got slightly rolled fretboard, uh, which the previous ones didn't. They were very square. So when they carved the um, the radius, it left a hard edge, and it was just never comfortable, but this one, it's just rounded, just like uh, my CE. So when I play this or the CE, I, I don't even know which one I'm playing. I have to basically almost look down to see. And now with the mod that I've done, the sound is, for all intents and purposes, almost identical. I don't even have to worry about it. It just works. Here's some more sound samples.